Hello and welcome. In this video, I would like to go through the modeling of skirted foundations. So, as usual, I'm going to draw a soil domain. And I'm going to make that 20 by 20. So from this point 10 comma minus 10 over here to minus 10 comma 10. And then let's make it 10 high as well. That's my soil domain. And I might use a Tresca material uh, for this particular exercise. And we will leave it at the default parameters. There are videos on YouTube where I uh, go through um, the process of basically um, prescribing a, a linear variation of strength with depth, but it's also possible to actually um, either input a profile or, a, um, or import a profile from a, a strength profile or the profile of any parameter from an Excel file. Um, I'll go through that in another video, but that is definitely possible. In this video, I'll just stay with the default parameters, a constant SU of 100, and um, I might make it something less than that, let's say, let's say 30. So a very soft clay, and we could say uh, it's somehow offshore, so we could say a unit weight, an effective unit weight of 10 kilonewtons per cubic meters. And um, I'm then going to place my, my, my skirted foundation, um, which is basically sort of a tube uh, with the bottom end open. And so but I'm, I'm going to do that using the, the end prism. So the end prism is a, is a, is a discrete cylinder with a, a given user specified number of sides. The default is, is 12. I'll just stick with that in this example. You can, of course, choose any uh, number of sides that you want. So, but let's say 12 and then place it at 0, 0. Let's have a radius of 1 meter. So a diameter of 2 and then a height of, I'm going to input minus 4. So a depth of 4 meters. Um, I can hide that and there you see this cylinder of soil and it's to the surfaces of this cylinder of soil, not including the bottom surface, that I want to uh, basically apply the skirts uh, and then a, a lid at the top as well. Um, and for that purpose I'm going to use the shell element. So I'm just going to first just unselect everything except faces and then move on to features and then I'm going to select all of these surfaces and basically apply a shell. So here we go. That's the shell and there are also some interfaces but I'll take that just in a little while. Um, unhide this and we then I'm going to apply a point load at the center of this cylinder. So I need to create some lines. I basically need to create a, a cross here cylinder like that and like that and I can then apply my point load to the center of that foundation. Reset and select that point and basically apply a point load. And I could say this point load has, it has three components. Moment loading is also possible to apply. Again, there is a video on combined loading of shallow foundations available. Uh, you would apply that to the, to the lines. Um, so it's a distributed moment. Uh, here I'm just going to apply this point force and it will have, let's say, two components. A component, let's say it has an inclination 
with a vertical of 20 degrees so it has 20 degrees uh, so in the x direction is going to be 20 sine and in the z direction is going to be 20 cosine minus so i have a point i have a point load here with a resultant of 1 with an inclination of 20 degrees you'll note here of course that i could have used symmetry and only actually modeled half the problem uh, that's of course entirely possible but uh, i'll just stick with the full problem uh, for the time being standard fixities and then i am ready to go and in this example i'm going to use a little more elements than i usually use something like 20,000 let's say and let's use four adaptivity steps starting from a thousand elements in the course of four iterations four adaptive iterations gradually work your way up to 20,000 and I'm going to run that now and this is going to take a little while it's not going to take hours at all it's going to take uh, minutes but um, I will just Here's the first result, so that's a little over a thousand elements. I will just pause things and then be back once the results are in. And I'm back and I went for a for a a um a drink as well, a soft drink. So this took about I think something like probably like five minutes or so. Uh, we have a total of 23,000 elements in the final adaptive iteration, the second last about 10,000 and you can see that the um, improvement from the third to the fourth iteration is quite minimal and of course this is the calculation that, that takes by far the longest. So um, you want to use, you want to set the number of elements to what you need and what you need is typically not more than 10,000. Um, there is a bit of a, could call it an obsession in the finite element community of using a huge number of elements and uh, running your jobs and supercomputers and so on and um, the thing is it's, it's with, with Optum G3, it's in most cases not really necessary to use a huge number of elements of these mixed elements, but also the upper and lower bound elements. Combined, these three elements are really high quality elements, and when combined with mesh adaptivity, you usually don't need more than something like 10,000, um, which takes a minute or two to run. So anyway, a, uh, a load of, of uh, 1,791 and you could run upper and lower bound analysis as well and you'd find something slightly below and slightly above this solution, uh, this, this number. Um, and the adapted mesh looks like this. Um, we see that uh, it has been adapted more or less corresponding to how we would expect it to fail uh, and I just need to check here uh, yeah that is how it looks as usual the shear dissipation is the key quantity to indicate where we have plasticity um, the shear dissipation basically is the um, shear stress times the shear strain at failure so you see this type of of pattern here and um, in geotechnics the thing is most of the activity is underground and you can access uh, the underground by this so-called clip tool over here so you press that and then uh, you can you have three different possibilities for basically specifying your plane now it's right at the top and oh, then you can use the slider here to basically slide it down and see whatever quantity it is you're interested in in this case the shear dissipation uh, with with depth so 
Um, the domain here turned out to be actually large enough. It's deep enough, as you can see, and it is also uh, wide enough. And so that's one possible view. We could use this one as well. Yeah, well, that's then on the other side. That's basically what you would ha have had if you had modeled it using, um, of course, symmetry considerations then you could have modeled half the problem and you would have seen something like this immediately. You can turn off the mesh, it's sometimes a bit disturbing um, with this clipping tool. Um, so that's basically how the deformation pattern is or if you, um, the, um, the shear dissipation. So that's how that is and let's turn off the clipping tool and let's turn on the mesh again and um, so then the question is what about these interfaces because i haven't done anything particular about the interfaces there are interfaces included by default when you apply shell elements so um, but let's just have a look at that in more detail so uh, hide the solid here and then you can see the shell elements are the are the yellow ones or the golden ones here and then the orange bit here is basically the interfaces of the same material as the parent material that is to say the Tresca material if you click you see that you have the possibility of um, specifying a reduction factor at the interface so you would quite often do that or you usually do that so you don't have the full shear strength at the interface, but you have some, some fraction of it. And um, ideally speaking, at the interface, you would probably also want to have a no tension uh, material. So you'd want to have a tension cut off. And the way we can apply that is um, we need to define a new material of the same type as the, as the soil material. So duplicate the Tresca basic material and we can make that uh, some sort of um, purple color like that and um, it has the same properties the only difference is this material has a tension cut off and I'm then going to apply that to these interfaces so I can if I make only faces selectable I can basically select um, select all of these faces at once which is which is a lot easier than of course uh, doing it individually so I've now selected all of the faces all the skirts to start with and I'm going to apply this new material um, so they turn pink and I'm going to do the same up here. And then I'm also going to apply a reduction factor of 0.5. And I'm going to do the same for these guys here on both sides, both inside and outside the, uh, the cylinder. Um, so the shear strength at the interface is is the is SU is 30 times 0.5 so 15 and a tension interface is included as well and let's see what difference that makes to the results and I'm going to run again and be back when the uh, results are in <coughs> All right, and the analysis are done. Again, similar situation as before. We start with about a thousand elements in the first iteration, then up to three, ten, and a bit over twenty thousand. And we see again that the improvement from the third to the fourth iteration is really minimal. So, ten thousand elements in this case would have been quite sufficient. Um, regarding the limit load or the collapse multiplier, which in this case is equal to the bearing capacity because we have a resultant multiplier force of 1, 1367 versus what did we have before? 
we had 1791. So quite quite a decrease. I think it's probably something like is it 25% or so. So interfaces for this type of problem are really quite important. And if we look at how things fail, you can see that there is more of a obvious separation between the foundation and the soil. You don't see that to the same extent uh, without interfaces. The soil simply sticks or the or the um, yeah the soil sticks to the back of the pile. There is some opening here because there are interfaces but with the same shear strength as that of the soil uh, and with the same tensile capacity as well um, as the soil. So quite different failure patterns in the two cases with this one um, probably looking more realistic. So there is a clear separation between the soil and the uh, pile or the, uh, uh, the skirted foundation in this case. And we can try to cut through this as well. Um, try this one here first. The shear dissipation um, in many ways is a similar pattern to what we saw before. Um, not really a huge amount of difference and if we take this view and I then just have to turn it around and if we set this to 10 <laughs> set that to 10 we are in the same situation as we would have been at if we had used symmetry so this is basically half the model a cut halfway through the model and again it looks not too different to what we had uh, before so I can get that clip view up and running and the mesh off and the shear dissipation so this is with no reduction of strength at the interface and with a reduction of strength and also a tension cut off. So slightly different and uh, the main difference I think, um, well, depends who you are, but, but definitely a difference in limit load. So um, that is how skirted foundations work in Optum G3. See you next time.